Hey guys, welcome back to your family team. This is my sixth video I am going to upload, and uh, literally, I'm very tired. Uh, I, I'm uh, to tell you frankly, I'm uh, so bored, but uh, very excited to upload this video. Um, I hope you like it. If you have any questions, please do let me know before starting this topic. Uh, um, please do subscribe, that's what I want, right. Just keep uh, replaying the video again and again. And one thing I want to tell you that if you go to my channel uh, where you can see a link, a uh, playlist. I made a play playlist so that if you click once, you can. Uh, it will take you around one to two hours depending on the topic or subject. So uh, you will get more and more information. Just a one click. You are one click away. That's it. Okay. Let me start with the task of channel syndrome. Welcome back, guys. Okay. What is it? It's the compression of the tibial nerve or its associated branches as the nerve passes underneath the flexor retinaculum at the level of ankle or distal. Lipomas, tendon sheath, ganglia, neoplasms within tarsal canal, nerve sheath, and nerve tumors and varicose veins, bony prominences, and exostosis may also contribute to the disorder. This is the same disorder like a carpal tunnel syndrome. Later, I will upload more video on uh, carpal tunnel syndrome. That's also very important topic for your seminar examination, guys. Okay, guys. Now uh, this is about how does the patient present. That's very important because you need to differentiate between the plantar fasciitis and other disorders. So you need to know the signs and symptoms for your seminar examination. Okay, let me start. Vague symptoms of the foot pain, which can sometimes be confused with the plantar fasciitis. Findings of the pain, paresthesias, and numbness are not uncommon. In some cases, atrophy of intrinsic foot muscles may be noted, although this may be clinically difficult to ascertain. Aversions and dorsiflexion may cause symptoms to increase at the end point of range of the motion. Okay, this is very important. What I am going to uh, tell you is a tinnel sign. Radiating of pain and paresthesias along the course of the nerve may often be induced posterior to the medi medial meliodas. Okay, I am kidding. Uh, sometimes generally it subsides with the rest, although the typical do not disappear, do not disappear altogether. Percussion of the nerve with the resultant distal manifestation of paresthesia is uh, known as the tineal sign. You need to remember what is tineal sign, when it is done and how it is done. This is very important for your similar examination. This should not be confused with the Fallon sign which is compression of the suspected nerve for 30 seconds with subsequent reproduction of patient's symptom. Physical examination may demonstrate reduced sensitivity to the light touch, pin break, temperature in the patients with the distal symmetric sensory motor neuropathy. So in USML they can give the history of uh, loss of uh, sensory functions because this can be get, uh, you get confused with the diabetic neuropathy. Okay? Mm, uh, radiographic examination of the patient's limbs may demonstrate loss of bone density, thinning of the phalanges or evidence of neuroarthropathy. Oh, what is the diagnosis test for that? Do you want to diagnose or do you want to treat? What do you want to do? I don't know. You need to decide. Okay. For you guys, we have a electromyography, EMG and a nerve conduction studies. Okay. If you want to treat, treat. If you want to investigate, investigate and treat. That's it. Local injection of the steroids as the treatment of choice for the patients with tunnel syndrome. Okay. Thank you guys. Thank you so much for watching my video. I'm very sorry for being tired. Uh, okay, I'm really very sorry. Thank you so much for watching my video. Take care. See you.